well, hello. It is so good to see you. And for everybody that is just jumping on, I'm Rob Appel from Making It Fun, Michael Miller Fabrics. And this is my dear friend, Karen, from Sew and Save in Racine, Wisconsin. <laughs> How are you, Karen? <laughs> I'm a terrible interrupter, so I will try not to talk over you all the way through our little interview together today. Thank you so much again for being here. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you for helping me out with this project. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. Oh, and it was super fun. And before I dive in, but we are going to talk all about the heart uh, quilt there. And uh, okay. um, I want to hear, where, where are you sitting at? Where is this lovely space I'm seeing? This is my studio. This is my home studio here in Racine, Wisconsin, at my home called the Potterosa. Okay. My last name is Potter. Right. So. Well, this is the Potterosa, and we live right on, lucky enough to live right on Lake Michigan, and right. it's uh, kind of a, look not too bad of a day out, a little chilly, a little gray, but um, my my sewing room overlooks the lake, and I'm very fortunate to have my little space here. Right. Love it. It, it looks like a beautiful scenery. I it. Just don't look at the floor, because all the piles went on the floor. Right, right. Well, you know, it's funny, I used to work construction. And I was always trained. We had to, you know, put all the tools away and sweep at the end of every night. Uh, before, sure. You know, and so I still do that in my studio. I have this dust mop that I run. I have wood floors and I love to run the dust mop at the end of the night before I leave every. And I actually have started to do uh, the lint roller on my ironing board as well because I like to stay up late and sew and I like to come back in the morning. And we've been pretty busy out here in the studio. And I understand you've been pretty dang busy out there in uh, Racine in the shop and at home too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Our shop has been really busy where we do have a safer at home order. So our shop is officially closed. Um, but we have a lot of people doing drive up, picking up bolts of fabric, in fact, to make masks for, um, for themselves, for their families. And now since they're talking about wearing masks all the time, um, the smaller companies are all and the bigger companies too, are making masks for their employees. To oh, wear right. too. So we're selling bolts of bolts of fabric go out the door to make masks. So we've been busy keeping up with that. Yeah. And it's been it's it's good. It feels it feels good to know that we're doing something because at this time you kind of feel like there's really nothing you can do, but this is something that we can do. Yeah. Know? Yeah. It's interesting. There's, uh, there's for... nothing I can do. There's just there's just not. You know? But yeah. masks we can do. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. And I've been explaining, I have teenagers uh, here at home and I've been trying to use this as a concept of one, each person does make a difference because if every person right now will shelter in place, will wear a mask, will do their best to not touch everything they don't need at the grocery store, all of these little things we can do, you know, it really can make a, a quicker turnaround for how we get back to what is normalcy. It's exactly. interesting for me because I feel like I kind of built a wonderful environment around myself and yeah. so I was traveling way too much and I feel like I've actually been offered the one of the world's greatest gifts this this pause time where everybody is now here close around the house because often when I'm not on the road we're running around because I'm home for vacation or whatever and I, I don't want to yeah. brag but I think I might be enjoying this all maybe a little <laughs> bit too much but I will also say um, that's partly because I feel like maybe at Michael Miller, we've, we've already weathered a bit of what was our biggest fear. Our biggest storm is what would happen in the quilt shops. And those first few weeks, you know, we were really concerned what was happening. We saw an immediate turnaround. And like you were saying, um, we're already starting to even see different kinds of manufacturers that have sewing machines convert their tooling to be using more cottons. And every shop owner like uh, yourself or that I've been speaking with has been saying that that's primarily been the focus is either masks or scrub tops, hats. It's, it's been yeah. basically the major conversation we're having. But I also, back to me being selfish again, um, because I'm home and I've been helping do a lot of quilting projects also, I've been doing a ton of sewing and quilting. And so I feel great because for me, working with my hands is what makes my heart and my head feel better. So it's, it, this, it's happy. this is a happy place for a lot of quilters and sewers right now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of sewers are getting a lot of sewing done. I, I, I'm in contact with a lot of my customers and they're doing a lot every week we do a show and tell and then uh -huh. i give a little prize so on our facebook page people are posting things that they make 
Um, and I, I run that for like 24 hours or 48 hours so they can post. And then at the end, whoever posts something, their name goes in and then I draw and they get a little fat. One of those little fat quarter packs of the right. Michael Miller, the hash dots. Oh, and the, wonderful. And the, and the cotton couture. Yeah, yeah. So a fat quarter pack of those. And, and it's a lot of fun. And it, it keeps us kind of connected and together, even though we're not physically together. So that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. People like that a lot. It's interesting, even if we had to do this a few years ago, where we would be at, and now where we're at with technology, um, it's it's pretty interesting to see how quickly we have been able to, to connect and just reroute business and kind of morph with the changes. And it's exciting, you know. Um, I think the other thing that I'm mostly excited about, and I'm, I'm probably putting words in your mouth, but <laughs> is how folks are using their sewing skills to really do stuff to better their community. And I know that like yeah. folks are making masks for themselves, but I know a lot of people that have made several hundred masks and they're just handing them to folks as they walk about. And that's pretty oh, cool. That's cool. And, yeah. I, and I want to hear all about this project that you asked me if I, I, excuse me, I want everyone at home to hear all about it. I know a little bit about it, but I want <laughs> everyone to hear all about it, but I want to hear from you because this was such a blessing when I heard what you were up to. So are you ready to tell everybody? I am ready to tell everybody. Um, out on, on social media, there have been people who are putting hearts in windows to show their support to their neighbors, their community, to those essential workers that are going um, to work every day, keeping our, keeping us safe, keeping us healthy. And what I thought we needed to do was to ban our quilting community and our sewing community and our artists together and put little quilted hearts in windows so that they know that our, you know, as quilters, we're always doing things and we're giving things and we're, we're sharing our, our, our love of quilting with everybody. So I thought this was a really good way to, to continue to do that and to share our love of quilting with our neighbors and those who are keeping us safe every day. So I came up with a very simple um, heart in a star quilt to hang in your window. And um, I just want everybody to make one and give one. And I'm hoping to get quilted hearts and windows all around the country and hopefully all around the world. And yeah. I know some of them are going overseas to some families. So it's really, really cool. So we want to get as many hearts and windows as we possibly can. Fantastic. And I, again, you know, Karen reached out to me to ask if I could use the channel a little bit to help spread the word. And I said, well, can I do a tutorial as well? Because right now I would love to have another fun patchwork project to show everybody. And so I did, I made the version on the wall there. That's all quilted up and bound and everything. And then here were the little samples I was working on. Um, now, Karen, as I mentioned in the tutorial, uh, has put together kits. Um, and so the one I see right here, the corner of yours, Karen, is the original, is that correct? This is the original one. This is, this fabric is called Mackinac Island. And um, it's special to, Mackinac Island is special to us because it's in Upper Michigan, which is just north of, of Wisconsin. We're in Wisconsin, but it's it's someplace that all of us girls have gone because it's a cute little island where we can go shopping and things. And in fact, I had a bus trip of ladies who went up to Mackinac Island to get, we all went together. So the fabric was very special to us. And and so, you know, the, the fabric kind of brought us together to our roots. Of, of the Midwest and I thought the heart or the star kind of brings us together with the United States and the heart brings us together with the world and so that was kind of my concept in my little in my little quilted window wall hanging right and, and so we kind of just want to share that with everybody yeah, well, compliments and bringing in the patriotic theme and the colors too because it just serves so many purposes this way. And it was great. And I love your little florals. I mean, it's, I would say it's more of a traditional line. What I did, and, and the other yeah. three reason that Karen reached out to me real quick is she said, can Michael Miller help get fabric and keep fabric coming in? Because Karen has these kits available. So I went with our basics yeah. and I chose uh, the fairy frost in the red, cotton couture, our solid white. The marble is the blue. I hopefully you can see there's some fun texture there. Yeah. And then one of my favorites is the hash dot. And I was laughing, Karen. Um, so I'm noticing that your quilt looks a little bit bigger than mine and I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold it up again real quick. Um, yeah. yeah. I loaded my heart in the middle of my outer border and you just sort of 
um, took a little different direction and didn't do that. And that's okay. Yes. There's nothing wrong with that. And I kind of did this this way because you could, you know, you could eliminate the little, I have, they got a little two inch border before I have my little three inch border out right. here and a cat going by. Right. Good. And so depending on your window size, if you're giving it to somebody who's maybe in assisted living, doesn't have a lot of space, you know, you can eliminate the outer border. You could eliminate the, the floating border as you did and have a little bit smaller project. Right. Without a tail of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Cat cameos are appreciated. I believe all, almost all quilters love cats until they're on your project, of course. So. Absolutely. Yeah, they always need to be here. She comes back by me again. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> She's a ham. Yeah, it's classic because for my end, it looks like the, the auto focus on the computer's doing weird things, which will make the video, it will it'll be like special effects for our video today. There you go. That's great. Uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was funny. I was sewing mine up very late at night. That is one of the things I have found <laughs> is that we are busy, busy, busy. And the opportunities for these kinds of things are coming across you know, the pipeline so quickly. And I, I don't want to let any of them go by. So I, I really thought I had followed the instructions. So I'm glad to hear that people can purchase the pattern from you as well. And they'll yes. need that to go along with the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, they might need that. Yeah. yeah the part, um, so we on our website, we have uh, the pattern itself available. Um, and then we have kits. We have a single kit and a double kit. And it's my hope that you buy a two pack. Right. And make one for yourself and give one to, to somebody um, and to share that that with somebody else who may be in your neighborhood or a family member or maybe even um, a military person right. who, might be over, who might be overseas and can't be home at this time. So that's why I kind of kept it with the patriotic theme. I really like I, I, people who know me know that I love red, white and blue and stars. Every year I make a new star flag right. or, a, or a new star quilt. Um or a flag quilt. I think I almost have a flag quilt every year as well. So I really like the red, white, and blue as well. So so that's where that's where I went with this. And um, a portion of the proceeds for from the sales of the patterns as well as the kits um, go towards uh, local charities because Fantastic. our local charities are hurting at this time as well. And they can't do their fundraisers and that which helped to support them all year round. And they don't have as many people being able to help them, you know, to donate their time sure. during the time as well. So we're trying to help them out as well. So a portion of the sales for every kit and every pattern goes towards local charity. So awesome. And then the yeah. last thing you're asking everybody to do is to send in photos because you're keeping track yeah. of where all the hearts are going, right? All the window hearts. Yes. Yes. We're going to try to put a little montage, a little video together of all different um, quilts and windows and doors. People are hanging on their doors. And um, so I want everybody to send me a picture of where their, their heart is hanging and where they're going. So we can maybe get a little map with little pins in as to where they are all over the country and maybe over all over the world. And, and so we can see our, our quilted love going all over the country. That'd be really cool. I promise to get my pictures uh, for you. That was one of my assignments this afternoon is to go outside and um, get some photographs of the, the window heart quilts, as well as a couple of other projects I want to get some photos of. So. Excellent. Yeah. So I'll send them over to you and I can be included in the montage and put out on the map. That'll feel great. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure you're going to post our little, our website and our email address and all that other good stuff under the video so people can connect with us easily. And Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And for those folks that are watching, they're like, I wonder if he's thinking to himself, did he put it on the uh, information <laughs> from the tutorial? And the answer is yes, because I'm recording this before the tutorial goes live, which means I'll go back and fix the description in the tutorial. So all of Karen's information will be everywhere you need it to Perfect. be. Thank That's you wonderful. so much. Well, gosh, are you kidding me? Thank you, Karen, for not only giving me the opportunity to participate um, and share and give a tutorial out there and stuff, but just for, you know, putting your heart forward and, and for immediately thinking of uh, a way to in, encourage folks while they're being safe at home to use yeah. their machines and use their time and, and either get a kit, use their stash, whatever they're doing, and just... Mm -hmm spread the love of the quilting around. Um, I really want to encourage everybody to make sure they purchase a pattern from you. I love the idea of the charities. Um, you know, that's something that for me, I had kind of forgotten and missed. And that was my biggest takeaway out of this project was, um, 
And, and I, I'll admit it, even some of my <laughs> charitable giving already had been slowly put on hold because I was concerned about what's going to happen in my future. And so, yeah. Yeah. you know, when, when we're all in these new times, um, people stop some of the things they're accustomed to. And so let's make sure we're not forgetting about our community out there. Let's make sure we're really supporting those people out there. And, and Karen, this is a fabulous project. Thank you very much for letting us share it. Well, thank you. And thank you, Michael Miller, for getting me fabric so we can continue to do this. <laughs> it's tough getting fabric here and there. That's right. How, how many kits so far have you sell, sold or uh, shipped 375. out? 375. I'm sorry, 375? Yep. Oh, my gosh. We want to double that. Come on, girls. We can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, will you? Okay. We're going to end with this. Uh, the video we'll post and then we'll track how many days it takes to double it. So, you'll let me know when we double 375. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's do it right away. You got it. Awesome. That sounds Great. fantastic. Let's get back to work on that then. What do you say? Sounds terrific. Thank awesome. you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Karen. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Have a blessed rest of your afternoon. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another Helping of Fun.